get back to generating some planets. So in the last video, I talked about how I want to generate a bunch of these planets into my game world, and we need to do it within a radius area, kind of like this, where we had the big circle, which are player area, and the little dots to be the planets. Now we created a little prototype where we showed how to equally distribute those points within a radius of a circle, and we can dynamically change that number to kind of demonstrate that we get equal distribution. Now the question is, how do we actually implement this into the game? So this much might not be as much straightforward because we're not just looking at algorithms, but instead actually implementations, but let's get into it. So I have my code here. I'm just going to close out of everything here. Um, for those that are really into how game development works, usually you wouldn't develop on your main or master branch, um, but for the sake of you know quick development and stuff, that's, that's fine for right now. Once we get into more production ready stuff, we'll definitely not do that. We'll be on branches. So anyway, let's uh, look at our code here. So we want to generate planets, which is going to be a server side task. So I'm just going to create a whole new service here called planet service. Why not? We have a little service here. And for those unfamiliar, I'm using my knit framework. Um, which if you've had any experience with the air game framework, it's kind of my succession to that. Uh, it kind of tries to answer some of the problems with AGF and make it a little easier for everyone. So anyway, I've got my service here and I want to create some sort of function to generate planets. Okay, done, All right, game over. <laughs> Well, we need someone to call this, and I'm going to have the match service call this because this one's kind of responsible for actually kicking off the game. So when our match is actually ready to go, we will kick off the planet generation. <clears throat> so it's a little messy. I need to clean this up. Um, let's get here. So we get the match info, and then match started. So about right here. It's where we would want to throw things. Just create a setup match method here. And here we're going to go out to init that services dot planet service. And we're going to call generate planets. Okay. So once my match is ready to be set up, we'll go out and generate planets. Okay, so over here, we need to think about how we can implement basically this code, right? So again, we have a number of planets we want. We have a play radius. These are kind of the two parameters I need to have sets. So I'm going to create those as constants. I'll zoom in a little bit here. So how many planets do I want? I don't think we're going to have 50, but for the sake of testing, we'll keep that number up. For the sake of play radius, I'll keep that kind of low too. I'll keep it at a thousand just to test. And uh, we'll go from there. So when we generate planets, again, we can almost just copy and paste all of this code here. So I think we have some IntelliSense here, stuff that helps us see, you know, RNG is not defined, so we need to define that. So we create a little random number generator. It's complaining that I isn't used, and we don't really need it, so we just do an underscore. And then place planets, we don't have a method for that yet, so I'll create one here. And now we can place it into the world. So one thing we probably want to do is create a folder for the planets to live in. And because I might use this for other things, I'm actually going to create it kind of like a top level. So I'm going to call it planets folder. And we can expose this here too. So planet service, and we just need to do planets folder equals whatever. That way other people can access this folder if they want to, for whatever reason. 
So when we place a planet, we need to somehow get our planet prefab, which we won't define yet. We'll clone it. We'll set the parent to planets folder. The planet model, we will set primary part C frame. This is a model to some C frame value, X, zero, Z probably. And now we need to define planet prefab. So if I go over to the game here, I can see that under server storage, map assets, planets, planet. So that's kind of the path we need to go there. So nice and simple. We'll again, define that up here. We're gonna make these constants. Usually I have constants as uppercase snake case. So we'll go get that prefab model. So get service, again, it's server storage, map assets, planets, planets. Okay, so now all we have to do is clone that. We've cloned our planet model, we've set it into the world, and we're setting a primary part C frame. We probably wanna do that first, set the parent last. And, uh, <clears throat> Now that should be pretty much ready to go. It won't do anything super fancy, but we should at least be able to place planets into the game. And uh, again, it wasn't that much code even to do this, so that's pretty nice. So let's test it. Um, I'm gonna go over here and we're just gonna click play. We see our planets. Oh, there we go. So, as we can see, we've spawned a bunch of planets. Something looks a little off though, to be honest. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Oh, but they're not anchored, so that could be a big problem. <laughs> All right, so let's try something here. First, let's make sure that looks proper. Yep, I'm gonna go into the assets here. Make sure these are anchored. We'll lock them too. Save this off, try again. You know, wait five seconds and then we'll go. Boom, okay, there we go. Cool. So immediately we can probably see some problems, right? Like, look at this, that's not okay. Um, this is not okay. That's definitely not okay. Um, planets typically don't merge into each other in real life, so. <laughs> We want to make sure that's not happening either. And there's a bunch of different ways we could do that. Um, I have a few different ways to go about doing that that I'll look into. And uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, so check this out. This is called Mitchell's Best Candidate, MBC for short. <clears throat> and this is a really clever algorithm. We're trying to kind of do something, I don't even know how to pronounce this, poison disc sampling. Uh, it's it's simple or it's close to this, and basically what we're going to do is as follows, right? <laughs> Produces a samples with blue noise spectral characteristics that are useful for minimizing aliasing. Unlike uniform random sampling, best candidate samples are more evenly distributed, with fewer samples close together. A similar but more efficient algorithm, again, poison disk sampling. But this is going to work just fine for us. So what it says here is as follows. For each new sample, the best candidate algorithm generates a fixed number of candidate samples shown in gray. Here, 10 candidates are generated. The best candidate shown in red is the one that is farthest away from all previous non-candidate samples. So it's actually quite straightforward what's happening here. And maybe it's a little hard to see here, but we get a bunch of random points. And then we choose the one that's farthest away from the rest. Quite straightforward. So implementation is pretty simple and actually I've already done this in the past. So I'm just gonna reuse an implementation I have right here. <clears throat> yeah, it is back in about a year ago, almost to this day. <clears throat> so MBC, this is my implementation. So we're gonna pass it uh, num values. So the number of values that we want 
number of candidates and <clears throat> get random sample, which is a function where we're gonna basically return uh, this, where we get the radius and stuff like that. That's our sample that we call our random sample that we want to try. So what does implementing this look like? Well, first I'm just literally gonna copy this module. So I'm gonna copy this here. I'm gonna go to our code base and under modules here, I'm gonna create which was the best candidate, Tatua. Paste to that. Okay, so we have our code here. Now we can go use it. So <clears throat> right here I can say local MVC equals nits.modules. Well, no, I can't do that. That's wrong. Up here. MVC. There we go. So we require the module. Now we can use it. So how do we use it? We have an example here. Num values, number of candidates. So num values, this is the number of planets basically you want to do. Num candidates is an algorithm level thing. So how many candidates do we want to generate to try from? 10 is usually a pretty good one for this. And then we go have a function to go get the samples. So implementation is quite simple here where we have number of planets and we want to uniformly generate those as such. Now, before we do this though, I'm gonna do this within our old one here because why not? So let's imagine back here, we have our NBC module somewhere. Obviously it doesn't really exist here, but NBC equals require somewhere.nbc. So instead of this, what we're going to do is we're going to get a bunch of points and we're going to call it MBC. And again, what we need to pass to it, number of values, number of candidates, and the random sample. So the number of values is planets. Our candidates, let's say is just 10. And we can adjust that as we need. And our function, is this. Something as simple as that. And actually it looks like my implementation here, my values are just getting quite simple ones here. So just wanna make sure I'm implementing this right. Yeah. Just return the values like that. And now we have our number of points that we can go through and put down into the world. So I'm gonna go over to this script here and under generate, we're gonna do that instead. So I'll just kind of paste it here for now. Local points and obviously NBC doesn't exist yet. So just for simplicity, I'm just going to steal this function and paste it in here. And now, once we get our number of points, we can just go through that list of points and place the planets at that point. So we will disable the old code here. We'll copy this, paste it in, and look at that. Now we have a more uniform distribution even of those. So we have less collisions and it performs really fast. You know, I can do a thousand of those almost instantly. So that's pretty good. So implementing this is gonna be very simple. So back to our actual code here, instead of doing this as we were doing before, we'll do points equals MVC. And then we're gonna give it the number of planets, the number of candidates, and our function to generate the points.
And then for each of our points, we will generate our planet. Just like that. All right, so now if we go back into our actual game, let's uh, save some stuff off, run the game, wait five seconds, and generate. So now we can see we don't have any collisions going on with our planets at all. So that's pretty nice. Now it's not saying that it's impossible to have a collision, but given a certain number, you can pretty much guarantee, maybe you could mathematically guarantee, I don't know, but you can pretty much guarantee that you're not gonna have a collision in a big open space, because again, it's always getting the farthest distance out of number of candidates. Again, it's possible you'd have a collision, and if you wanted to, you could write another algorithm that just checks if there's a collision. Um, and if so, do something about it. <laughs> if I was having a problem with that though, I would just up the number of candidates um, and that would work just fine. So that's probably all I'm gonna show here. Now we've got planets generating and they're not colliding. After this, I would do a lot of other work in terms of making sure that there's code wrapped around each planet using components and making sure other things are happening, such as some planet rotation animations on the client and stuff like that.